Hello, my sweet and lovely Capricorns. This is your horoscope for September 2024. And September will be movement packed for you, my dear Capricorns. You might be quite a lot of traveling. And also your mind will be traveling <laughs> all around ideas and all around information. And also September will be important month, astrologically speaking, because we have eclipse in September. And this will be the first pair of the eclipse. And second one will happen in two weeks in October. Now, and September and October will be crucial months for all of us because we will have situations that we you know or people or events that will be happening in our lives um that we will be feeling you know sort of thing life before and life after kind of thing and also in September we have two planets that will set the tone for the upcoming half even more even longer year <laughs> up until April those two planets will be, activate your two areas of your life that will be in a you know huge play for the next six to seven months. Now let's begin September from the start. Third of September, we have new moon in your ninth house. Now new moon will happen at 11 degrees, meaning those of you who are born on a New Year's Eve, 31st of December, plus or minus five days, will be affected the most by new moons. And new moons are new beginnings, new stories, new storylines, new people, <laughs> or new events happening in your life. And that new moon happening in ninth house suggests some sort of travel in the beginning of September. And, but, you know, that new moon will be opposed by Saturn, your ruler, my dear Capricorns. Saturn is the planet of responsibilities, is the planet of hard work. And also a planet of restrictions. Whatever Saturn touches, it makes it smaller, makes it limited <laughs> and restricted. Now, Saturn will be in your another travel, let's say house, third house, because third house is a short distance travels. Now, but anyhow, new moon is happening in your long distance travels. So it seems like you might be traveling both in short distance and long in the beginning of September. If you're already traveling, enjoy your trips. <laughs> And, but, you know, opposition, the, you know, the aspect between them, I usually call it relationship aspect. Seems like for some of you guys, it might be related not to travel, but to a relationship. For example, between you and your uh, kids or between you and your siblings. If you have them like brothers and sisters, between you and your neighbors and, and also between you and your inner circle relatives because third house is those people who are we talk daily you know if not daily but regularly so uh you know your inner circle is here a question there might be sort of a argument between you and those people for some reason and the reason might be about studies or about a foreign land foreign country and foreign documents new moon is happening in your ninth house some of you might get actually residence permits or citizenships or travel documents like if you've applied previously like visas if not then you might start by this new moon that process of gathering the documents gathering all sorts of you know um applications and paperwork for travel documents whatever is that whether it's a visa or permit or citizenship, you know. And in general, ninth house is the house of, you know, broadening the mind, searching for life meaning house. Seems like this new moon will open the gates of your mind. Seems like you are hungry for more, for more sort of education, for more information, and even philosophical studies sort of thing, like religion, uh, higher education, or people of other culture, and uh, like knowledge about other cultures too here. Um, you would like to know about faraway lands as well and make even trips, as I said. For that, you might take up some short-term uh, courses also, but I would like to warn you that those courses will be hard to finish, I guess, and it might be also the, you know, the situation that you might not be satisfied by those courses, what you're going to learn, and you still will feel the hunger for more, maybe even for a degree. You might decide to go to university, actually, you know, and you might get an acceptance letter by these dates, like around 3rd of September, plus or minus five days. Or if that's your starting point, then it might be you will, you know, be busy with paperwork for application to university. In some cases, uh, my dear Capricorns, you might be, if you are especially involved in sort of legal litigations, it might be you will get a news around those cases, about those cases, but the news might not be so positive as you expect. And in case, uh, as I said, education before, there might be also a situation that you will get the news of uh, non-admission. Like uh, you might be not happy with the news that they didn't accept you for the university. This might be the situation too here. 
Don't be upset with that because the universe has your back. Let me tell you this quickly. Um, no, because all in all, uh, like karmic planets in September will be supporting a new moon and that eclipse. So it seems like whatever happens should happen and you should not be uh, upset with that. Now let's talk about ruler of that new moon, Mercury, because new moon will happen in your ninth house and ninth house is ruled by Mercury, will be in shadow period in your eighth house. Now what is shadow period? Because Mercury just came out of its retrograde period, meaning slowing down, moving backwards. Now it's moving forward, but still slow. It's trying to regain its speed uh, to the normal speed of Mercury, but it's still a bit of a slow, you know, it will get to that point only by 11th of September. Now, that Mercury will receive harsh angle from Uranus, planet of surprises and shocking news in your fifth house. And Uranus went retrograde on 1st September, and it seems like these two planets are indicating to something about your past or someone in your past. And here it seems like, you know, because Mercury will be in your eighth house, it might be either money related Either it might be children related, or if you don't have them, it might be conception related, like fertility journey. Take good care around this new moon if you, you know, don't expect to find out that you're pregnant, for example, because Uranus has the power here to shock you with that. But anyhow, that news might not come across as very shocking, but just uh, unexpected, because somehow, you know, <laughs> you anyhow knew sort of felt sort of thing because karmic planets will be sending positive beams to that Uranus that is sending harsh beam to the ruler of the moon and they will try to make softer the effects of Uranus they will try to make it more positive and amicable and it seems like that if that's your situation just uh, my advice to accept it do not fight it and that's how it's supposed to fall in your chart because you know karmic planets are involved here and the universe is supporting that and whatever will be your decision i would um, advise you to think twice now uranus also will be in your love house it might be the situation related to your dating let's say in situation and most probably someone from a different background and because it's a fifth house it's also house of business owners it might be related to money to your business. If you say nothing related to children or conception of fertility and I'm single, it might be about your business, especially funding for your business, like from financial institution or that bank loan that you've taken to develop your business or open it, you know, or start your business. <laughs> Something related to sort of financial aid. You know, eight house is also mystical house, sort of psychological, esoteric house. And it might be the time that you might get involved and enjoy a lot uh, in those subjects like astrology or like numerology and all those related things. In some cases, my dear Capricorns, uh, some of you guys might experience sort of critical crisis situation as well. And it might be related to the health situation of yours of your, or of your children. It could be uh, the case too. Uh, but nothing to be worried about or scared. Um, as I said, universe has your back and everything will straighten out. Do not worry around this new moon, my dear Capricorns. Now let's talk about ruler of this new moon, Mercury, That because Mercury will be a very interesting planet in September. It will be moving and activating your three areas of your life. In the beginning of um, September, it will be transiting your eighth house, activating, meaning like your mind might be all about money how to fund yourself, your life, your project, or whatever is there, your studies, your business, you know, it might be related to searching for um, help, financial help, uh, or also your mind might be around your taxes and loans or inheritance. At the same time, it could be related to investments. You might be thinking how to invest your money <laughs> into what to invest and might be even investing them into, let's say, shares and cryptos, all those financial instruments uh, and you know also you in some cases your mind could be on your healing journey on your health situation conception situation fertility journey as well and intimacy let's say sex life <laughs> all these things are sex well sorry eighth house <laughs> in some cases especially those of you who are students and still studying then it might be your mind would be around scholarships you know, and if you're in divorce situation, then it might be about alimony. Now, on 9th of September, Mercury moves into your ninth house. 
And, you know, it's a very sharp place for Mercury to be because it rules your ninth house. And as soon as Mercury hits your ninth house, it might bring the news from that new moon. If you say that I haven't gotten any news, but in the beginning of September, you might get your news after 9th of September or around this date. Because, you know, Mercury is the little postman of the universe. It might deliver the message from that new moon when it hits your house, ninth house, where that new moon appeared. And, you know, your mind also, for well, the whole September, might be swirling around your travel plans or booking tickets or, um, you know, buying some sort of trips. And um, it could be, in some cases, travel documents. You might be busy gathering them and immigration documents, like for residence permits, visas, and citizenships. Or it might be, you know, your mind will be around your um, education for some of you guys especially students. You might be uh, studying hard <laughs> the whole September because it will be exciting. You know, September is the start of the studies and you might be quite excited around that. And, you know, Mercury in the ninth house might also give the real travel. You might physically travel somewhere or immigrate somewhere, finally, let's say. <laughs> and also ninth house is all about our uh, work that we want to publish, whether it's a book or article or a research uh, it might be related to publishing. Whole September you might catch you busy with publishing house, with editor, or maybe you, you might have to rework, rewrite some parts of that work, of your masterpiece, my dear Gabricorns. Or it might be that you will have quite a lot of back and forth communication, you know, with your editor. Uh, all things related to publishing might come um, forth in the whole September. In some cases, it might be spiritual way you know ninth house is our religion is a mentality beliefs in what we believe and searching for meaning of life in your mind could be there too you might be reading a lot of things like in search of meaning of life sort of thing <laughs> digging yourself kind of thing <laughs> could happen too but by the end of september when mercury moves into your 10th house you know whole topic changes in your head in your mind. Now, Mercury activating your 10th house on 26th uh, of September might bring quite a lot of thoughts around your career. What is your life calling? What do you want to do with your life? What, what kind of contribution you want to make, you know, to humanity, let's say, in terms of your career, in terms of what you do, and in terms of your also reputation, how much reputation you have, let's say, how much respect you have. Also, in some um, say, in Capricorn's lives, it might be, you know, your mind switch to your father's life because 10 house are those people who we respect, those people who want we aspire to be like. And our fathers are here, our managers are here, or any other person that we respect, you know, sort of. And your mind could be there. You might be quite thinking, quite invested mentally in that area. And also 10 house is our social status what kind of social image we have. You might be thinking about your place in the bigger society, like uh, your marriage situation. Your, uh, are you single, let's say, um, or are you married, or are you in divorce? This kind of like social labels kind of things might be going on in your head by the end of September. Now, let's talk about Mars, because Mars will be one of the planets to set the tone for the upcoming half year. Now, 4th of September, Mars moves into your 7th house. This is amazing time and place to be for Mars for you, my dear Capricorns. Now, as soon as Mars hits your seventh house, it activates the topic of the half year, even longer, up until April. Now, Mars is the planet of action. Mars is the planet of desire and our motivation, where we put our efforts. Now, for the whole next year, up until, I mean, next half of the year and up until April, your effort might be, you know, around your relationships because mars you know uh, it's it's very unusual for mars to be in one um, area of your life but because it will be retrograding this year it will go retrograde this year but come back uh, to this seventh house on 6th of january because it during retrograde it will briefly uh, leave your seventh house but then uh, will return on 6th of january right after new year and will leave it Finally, only by the end of April 2025. Now, that's how long the universe through Mars telling you something, telling you to focus on this part of your life, telling you to deal with that part of your life. And, you know, Mars retrogrades every two years. And, and Mars uh, naturally rules in your chart your house of home and family. 
And, you know, relating to someone, especially in a committed way, will come forth starting from September. It will be the busy, busiest and biggest part of your life right now. Uh, and, you know, as I said, until April, this topic will be everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, seventh house is house of committed relationship, house of marriage, house of love and agreements. Also, where we need to sign papers uh, and relationships, for example, with our business partner, because then we also sign papers. Those are committed relationships. And here we have also divorce. Here we have a property division. Also, we have a contractual agreement and also our enemies that we know face to face or better to say competitors and opponents. Like all other people is our seventh house, but, but mostly those who are in our life long term you know, in the long run. And here, when I say love partners, it's not those who were dating, but those like, let's say, our spouse or long-term partners. And Mars activating this house, this area of your life, seems like makes you busy, you know, quite a lot of activities around that. You uh, might be, let's say, traveling with your spouse, or you might be, um, there might be quite a lot of small things to do, even like uh, those things might be on pause when Mars will go retrograde and will come back uh, in January so that you will take up where you left and you will um, further proceed with your things that you've been busy with your partner. Uh, it might be also a wedding or um, a marriage. It might be that you are planning these things all this time. And of course, by winter, it might be on pause and it will be um, continued until April when you will have the wedding, actual. <laughs> As an example, you know, I might give you millions of examples, but to say the, let's say the topics, I'm, tr I'm trying to give you the context, what might happen here. Mars is focusing, trying you to focus on that part. And it seems like your family will be playing the key role too. It might be them who will be stressing you to, let's say, get married or to make a, to build a family or something going on like with your committed relationships in your family especially your mother it might be that your mother will be stressing that or it might be your mother's wedding that you will be busy with also uh, this could be um, the situation too here and mars in the seventh house also gives quite a lot of contractual agreements it might be not about marriage or love it might be about business uh, September will be the month when you will start, you know, or you will be thinking or you will get offered to enter into partnership in business and presented uh, by an agreement, contractual agreement. And it seems like those kind of opportunities will be a lot or you might be busy on one. And that contractual agreement might, you know, be on pause when Mars will retrograde, but will pick up from the pause uh, after New Year, as I said when it comes back to your seventh house and will be finalized only in April. Just to tell you, <laughs> you might uh, you know, see the results of that agreement, of that business agreement, only by the end of April 2025, so that you know. And it might be also some opponents activated or competitors activated. You might have sort of a, quite a lot of um, topics and arguments. It might be arguments or it might be sort of talks and a lot of come and go like communication between you and your competitors going on or your opponents, some sort of enemies. They might get active in your life <laughs> in, in the next like half year. Or there is alternative that, you know, to that love situation, it might be vice versa. You might be busy with divorce, for example, as an example, or property division with uh, especially on real estate or with your soon-to-be, let's say, ex-husband or wife. This could be the situation with Mars in your seventh house too. Or you might be business-wise quite in a lot, in a lot of uh, talks with uh, companies and big corporations because seventh house rules those things in your chart. Now, let's talk about eclipse because one of the important things going on in September will be this eclipse and that will affect all of us. 18th of September, we have full moon lunar eclipse in your third house, house of communication, commerce, and trade. At 25 degrees, meaning those of you who are born around 14th of January will be affected the most by this eclipse, my dear Capricorns. Um, speaking about eclipse, I will make a whole separate video on this eclipse, so stay tuned where I will give more and deeper information uh, of what's to come for you. But here I would like to briefly mention that full moons are all about conclusions. They bring some sort of last resort, sort of 
um, they conclude a situation that is already there in your life or sort of a person <laughs> or an event or another function full moons uh, they have that they put your attention into some situation or person or something in your life that needs your attention now and immediately let's say that you've been ignoring and simply not noticing and because it's an eclipse you know eclipses have they usually have uh, power of 10 full moons that's why they are um, influence you know um, period is also broader and longer so allow this eclipses two months before and two months after to manifest in your life to bring the message and some capricorns might have already gotten news by the end of july or by the end of august or they will get now in september and some of you guys might be getting your news only by the end of october or november that's how long this eclipse is influential and eclipse is an amazing tool you know of the universe they usually bring some sort of shocking abrupt situations and events into our lives that we are so resistant to that change because usually <laughs> as humans we don't like change but you should remember one thing eclipses they usually uh, always work in our favor and whatever will be happening there it's always good at the end of the day you will realize that it was good that it happened that way it was good that the you know result was exactly this but for now when it will be happening it might not seem that way and even it might be stressful but still uh keep your faith in the universe you know trust universe and it always has our back uh, and eclipses work in that way that to bring us forward to our destiny to bring uh, let's say to um, empty a bit of a space that already is not working in our life that is already dead and that we are ourselves reluctant to uh, let go or reluctant to erase or make a decision there <laughs> so that new energy comes in more positive and more better moving us towards our destiny and life future let's say now this eclipse will have harsh angle from Jupiter in your sixth house. Now Jupiter itself is a happy lucky planet of the universe. It's an angel of the universe that showers us with gifts. But Jupiter somehow won't like that eclipse. It will welcome it by harsh with harsh angle to that eclipse. Will be very unfriendly and you know Jupiter in your sixth house, it's amazing position actually for you for in a whole year to find that dream job, to find that dream project and position and a company. But here, because Jupiter is sending an uh, unfriendly beam to that eclipse, which is happening in your third house, seems like you know the communication might go wrong here by the end of September. If you are in talks for a new job position, if you are in an interview, I better suggest to postpone that interview or to another date, at least to move this interview if you have that power to another week or even let's say later for some reason. For some Capricorns, it might be even lucky interview because this is also an opportunity, you know, it might be that you might actually receive that job offer, but you know, take good care before you decide actually that you are taking that job. Because, you know, Eclipse will be conjunct with Neptune, planet of, of course, magic, <laughs> but also planet of illusions. And also Neptune is connected to fog. Whatever Neptune touches, it makes it unclear, confusing, some details will be missing there. Or if you have a contract to sign, you know, by the end of September, and it seems like important one, better not to sign it, because, you know, the conditions will be unclear. Something will be missing there, something will be confusing. So better, if you have that power, send that agreement to your lawyer, to as much as many possible like people possible there, so that they will give you uh, more opinions to make the concluding uh, final step. Now, Eclipse itself, without speaking about Neptune, is a very uh, dusty, let's say, time, dusty period in astrology, because, you know, Eclipse, uh, they bring all the situation up into the air, and, you know, it falls only uh, by the end of November, so it will give all the details, it will open all the cards that it has by the end of November, so better to make decision in December, because, you know, never take uh, important decisions during Eclipse, unless you are I don't know, a thousand percent sure <laughs> or a million percent sure to say better because decisions taken during eclipse seasons are very hard to change. They are like a stamp from universe, you know? They will be very hard to revert back. So think twice and even 10 times before taking any important decision because it seems like this eclipse will bring uh, on your table some sort of important papers to sign and it might be related to work, you know? 
new job position or a new assignment, new project. And that job position might be located somewhere far because Jupiter naturally rules your 12th house in your chart. It might be located on an island or somewhere near water, <laughs> somewhere foreign land than you are now located, for example. And I would really suggest you to think because, um, again, details will be missing. Very confusing one. Nothing to be clear. Very low visibility here. And Try to involve as much, as many people as possible so that you have opinions, more clear picture. But anyhow, this eclipse will be supported by heavy karmic planets, slow planets, and they will, you know, form a grand trine. Uh, this is, here's this thing in astrology called grand trine, and it's an aspect of opportunity, aspect of ease, you know, very influential thing very supportive aspect and it will be made exactly in uh, earth signs like you my dear capricorns uh, anyhow whatever the news is this eclipse is bringing seems like will be beneficial to you and it seems like it will be the right uh, time and the right place to bring that uh, situation or a person into your life with whom you will be communicating and because this grand shrine is happening in our sign, there is a good indication that financially that job offer or project or a position will be very good. So anyhow, there is plenty to think about for you, my dear Capricorns. I will give you more information on a separate video about this lunar eclipse, so stay tuned. Now, on another note, I would like to mention that Eclipse might be also related to your sibling. If it's not about your job, if you say everything is alright, I'm not changing my job, and I'm not taking up a new position, then it might be about your brother or sister. And it seems like it might be related to their a job or daily assignments or to their health situation, well-being. They might need a help from you, and you might be participating there too sort of. Uh, there might be a news coming up related to their life. And it seems like your siblings will be located somewhere very far <laughs> from home. Now, in some cases, it might be about transportation because third house, you know, it's a movement house of ideas and also physical transportation. That's why the transport types and transportation itself is here and driving is also here. If you've been trying to sell your car or buy a car, again, take good care, take a good look at the papers and also all the details within like technical details uh, in your car and maintenance, especially because Jupiter's in your sixth house. Now, third house is also all about new skills and learning skills, some sort of courses. You might be taking up some short-term like training uh, trainings or sort of acquiring new skills through some short-term course courses too, or driving um, skill too <laughs> might be here involved. This is to briefly speak about this eclipse and let's move to sun. On 22nd of September, we have sun. Uh, light of our universe moving into your 10th house. As I said in the beginning, when Mercury hits your 10th uh, house by 26th of September, it will meet with Sun, who will be there already from 22nd of September. And these two planets will shift your life, sort of, and your mind into your career situation. Uh, you're, you might be taking up a new job and you might be now, let's say, <laughs> dreaming about your future career and not, in, in your case, actually not dreaming, but strategizing, you know, making a strategy how to achieve things in career-wise. That's in your blood, my dear Capricorns, use that skill. And 23rd of September, happy news that we have Venus planet of love and beauty moving into your 11th house and 11th house is events house it's a social butterfly house you know <laughs> and venus there making so you and other people so much amicable you might get received invitations to visit let's say museums or concerts or sport events like some sort of those events where masses of people gather by the end of september if you get this kind of invitation and if you go and accept, I think you will enjoy hugely because Venus will make uh, here your enjoyment even bigger, my dear Capricorns. And of course, some gifts from your friends might happen by the end of September. And little words about Uranus that I promised in the beginning of video. Now, Uranus is, you know, karmic planet. It's a slow moving planet. Uh, and 
Uranus's influence, you know, is more not direct, but more on a spiritual level. What's going on mentally? What's going on uh, in our like self growth? And on first September, it went retrograde, meaning slowing down. You know, it went backwards, and it will stay in that position until thirtieth of January. Now, you know, uh, during this retrograde of this planet, uh, it might be deja vu moments happening, like sort of you might be thinking back to the decisions that you've made from last September until 30th of January. What happened in that period? You might be thinking back to the events, to the people, to situations that happened uh, during that period last year because Uranus was retrograde the same period, you know, uh, in 2023 from September until January. And again, we have the same retrograde motion during a, a similar period. That's why Uranus is giving you a second chance to think about your decisions. And as I said, because it's more of a, like a background noise kind of uh, effect it might be popping up now and then in your head not necessarily you will be telling this to anyone you know or even to yourself like saying out loud it, it's just in your head like you know it's sort of a tape always on and you might be just time to time thinking about the situations as i said and people and decisions that you've um taken in that period especially related to your uh dating situation because it's retrograding in your fifth house uh with whom you dated or even those people might come back into your life and you might have the similar situations or you might have the repeating sort of pattern so be careful here not to fall again because jupiter is testing you it's a karmic planet and you know, his house is also uh, our business. For some Capricorns, it might be totally business related. Uh, there might be some business opportunities that were at the table last year, the same period, and now they will present themselves again. And what decisions you will take this time? Uh, you will have a plenty to think, you know. <laughs> and in some cases, it might be about your children. For some Capricorns, it's about your kids. And it's about your hobbies or your creativity side, especially for those of you who are actors, singers, like dancers in a creative area. It might be the time when you will be going back to those little artistic techniques that you were using in that period last year. And now you will be going back to them or sort of trying to them again or just thinking back sort of thing. And same comes to the children. You know, they might be experiencing um the same things the same situations and your job will be here to help them to come out as winners and not to be stuck you know and especially you take good care of yourself too mentally because as i said it's a more of a spiritual growth process mental process now this was your horoscope for september my dear capricorns don't forget to check your rising sign and moon sign because those uh, two are also important. It might be that your rising sign will give you more clues of what's going on in September or it might be your moon sign now very active in your life. So make sure to check all of them and stay tuned for Eclipse video. Love you all. Bye-bye.